Life, liberty, and the pursuit of independence. Ah, independence. It starts when you first get that first job, maybe when you head off to college. Actually, the journey to independence began much earlier. Maybe at 16, when you got your first license. Maybe at five, when you headed out and ran away from home. Actually, our Declaration of Independence starts much, much earlier as a baby. When you realize that by simply moving, you could impact your world. A five-month-old knocks a toy off her high chair and plays the never-ending game of Daddy, go get it. <laughs> baby decides. Daddy follows. That's an independent baby. Independence really gets rocking at two years old when a toddler heads for an open road. Is she actually increasing her speed as you get next to her going, come back right here, young lady? Baby decides what to do. Mommy decides baby's wrong. Baby decides baby knows best. That's an independent toddler. Every act of independence has at its core the very act of independence. We use our bodies to move, to signify our identity in the world every day. To leave your mark on the world, you've got to actually be able to make a mark on the world. Human mobility is a human right. That's what we're going to talk about today. At the Pediatric Mobility Lab and Design Studio at the Star Campus of the University of Delaware, I create technologies that allow kids with special needs to be independently mobile. Now, these kids can't move very well. They're often weak, incoordinated. Sometimes movement's almost impossible. A kid that can't grab or sit or crawl or walk misses out on the fun of motion. They also miss out on the ability to make independent acts and decide when and where to move, when to hug dad, when to run after brother, when to eat that booger. <laughs> and if you can't make a decision about when and where to move, someone else has to. Making a decision for a child with special needs is a dangerous business if you're trying to foster independence. Now, these kids need assistance. It's often practical, occasionally necessary, but the over-reliance on assistance is detrimental to their development of independence. So what happens next? You're dependent or you're independent. Again, making the decision for a child is a dangerous business. What would a world be like without children being independently mobile? Let's consider a toddler who can't move and therefore can't throw a tantrum. No terrible twos. Can I get a hallelujah? You've heard of doctors without borders? I'm talking about toddlers without tantrums. Tantrumless toddlers. Now that's an easier life. Easier to make decisions for them. Easier to control. Easier to disrespect. Easier to marginalize to the point of invisibility. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about some fun, real-world solutions to this human rights issue. In my lab, we develop technologies that get you moving in the first months of life. Now, to be in my lab to design and fabricate, you've got to be good, you've got to be quick, and you've got to love you some babies. <laughs> You're going to need the logical brain of a scientist, the creativity of an artist, but the patience of a toddler. Sunil Agarwal and I use National Science Foundation funding to start babies driving robots. Mobile robots for children as young as six months to drive around. The good news, really positive results. The downside, two high-end robots, more than a few kids in the planet that need them. A classic supply and demand issue with kind of a dark side. If I wasn't able to, to determine how to outfit more devices inexpensively planet-wide, we'd have another generation of kids isolated and immobile. So what would you do as a self-respecting professor up against a scientific and technical barrier? Drink? No. You go shopping. And where would a baby scientist go shopping? Anybody? Toy store, Toy store of course. So at likely the first, maybe the last, NIH-funded lab meeting at Toys R Us, we saw a variety of ride-on cars, each costing about 100 bucks. 
Keep in mind, pediatric power wheelchairs cost upwards of $25,000. Back at the lab, we tried to configure a way to modify these cars with real world materials for kids all over the world. Fast forward a couple of years, and I can tell you, there's a heck of a lot you can do with PVC pipe, a pool noodle, some fabric, and some modest electrical modifications. But what really can these cars do? They're just toys. That's Diamond. She's a four-year-old cutie that lives in a residential facility for medically complex kids. It's a really beautiful place with hand-drawn murals in the walls. And every day, she was passively pushed along these murals in the halls. Lab folks built her that John Deere tractor for her and her ventilator. And now she could actively drive down those halls. And she'd pass those murals occasionally and stop. And the nurses mentioned, this is really interesting. She's seen those murals her whole life. Why is she stopping when she's actively driving? It's like she's seeing them for the first time. They just articulated the science behind the development of visual perception. Active independent mobility changes our view of the world. Active independent mobility literally changes our view of the world. When Diamond hit that switch and swished by those painted murals, those walls came alive. She saw her world again for the first time. Go Baby Go is a project that's determined to outfit kids planet-wide with mobility devices as young as six or seven months old. Kids in the US, if you're going to have a pediatric power chair, they're going to wait five years. Five years of passive existence. You lose your mind if you're sitting at a stop sign for five extra seconds. If you're on hold on the phone for five extra minutes, how about with a FedEx delivery that's delayed five hours, if not five days? Five years waiting. I think you can now appreciate the detrimental effects, the isolation, the disrespect, the marginalization. So where do we go from here? Well, we go fast, we go furious, and we go obsolete. Let me tell you about two different technologies in the medical rehabilitation. There are assistive technologies, and there's rehabilitative technologies. Assistive technologies are canes, crutches, and wheelchairs. They bring your ability up to what the world demands, but it doesn't increase your body's ability. Somebody in a wheelchair after a year isn't expected to be stronger or more coordinated. A rehabilitative technologies, in contrast, are your treadmills, your balance masters, your gym equipment. They increase your body's ability to meet the world's needs, but they don't do it in real life, and they don't increase your functional skills. In pediatrics, we need both. What we need is a hero. Now, these cars, are, these toy cars, are so easy to manipulate and modify, it's easy to get carried away. And, well, we did. We took Thomas the Train here, a basic Fisher-Price toy for about 100 bucks, and we made it into the sit style. So at four or five months, you can get mobile, just like Diamond. Check out the switch on the seat. With a toggle switch in the back, mom can turn a sit car into a sit stand. So now to get the good stuff, you gotta stand up. A sit stand in one device, like a little mini Segway. Let's get greedy. Look at the foot plate. There's two switches there. We've got sit, stand, and now when mom toggles the, the switch for weight shifts, you have to unweight your legs back and forth on those platforms to get the good stuff. You feel where I'm going here? Sit, stand, weight shift. Why don't we drop the bottom out of those foot plates and put your legs squarely on the ground? Now, Thomas will only go when you stand up and shuffle your legs in a walking motion. So in one relatively inexpensive device, Mom, therapist, early educator can determine sitting early on, standing. But what if I can't stand by myself? A PVC harness can hold you there. Then a weight shift, then drop the feet out in a power-assisted walker. There's only one big problem now. What the hell is this thing? How am I going to sell it to industry? There's nothing like this on the market. It's a four-in-one spectrum car under $500. Right? It's a race car 
an alternative to a pediatric power chair early in the first year of life versus waiting five years. So you can participate in life with mom and dad. It's also a social gym. You can stand, therefore get stronger, stretch out, breathe, balance, bone health. But yet it's wheeled, so you get all that while you're chasing your friends around the playground. You drop the bottom out, and it's a power-assisted walker, getting a functional skill that just maybe you can get strong enough and coordinated enough to someday walk away from Thomas. An inexpensive, totally planet-accessible device that becomes obsolete. So the kids all over the planet might have a chance to get on with their life, with their liberty, and with their pursuit of independence. Thanks.